Singapore Green Plan 2012, SGP 2012 was released in 2002 by the Ministry of the Environment and Water Resources MEWR, as a continuation of the Singapore Green Plan first issued in 1992. Comprising eight distinct key measures, SGP 2012 aims to create an environmentally conscious Singapore, promoting conservation of the nation's natural resources and the use of green technology to conserve the environment, both locally and globally. It also aims to ensure sustainability in the country's development and to instill within Singaporeans personal duty and commitment towards the environment. In 2005, three focus groups on air and climate change, water and clean land, nature and public health were officially formed to undertake a three-yearly review of the SGP 2012. MEWR accepted many of the group's feedback and recommendations, subsequently incorporating the changes and updates into the plan. The revised SGP 2012 included changes such as the removal of certain targets and programs and while updating and expanding the goals of others. Topic. Vision Topic. 3P Partnership Cooperation between Singapore's people, private and public sectors is essential to forge an environmentally aware and responsible Singapore people sector. Efforts by the individual are valuable since they can participate in environmentally friendly acts such as recycling, consuming environmentally friendly products and sorting out recyclables from their own trash. These efforts are strongly supported by non-governmental organizations like the Nature Society, Singapore, Singapore Environment Council and the Waterways Watch Society to encourage environmental consciousness in society. Private sector, efforts by industries and companies towards establishing environmentally friendly manufacturing processes and materials to reflect their degree of responsibility as corporate residents of planet Earth. Taking on efficient environmental measures in companies' operations greatly reduces pollution and saves valuable resources. Government, represented by Ministry of the Environment, works towards facilitating and helping passionate groups and organizations find local and overseas partners for collaborations to enhance current and new environmental projects. Non-government and government organizations have held a myriad of programs, inspiring and pushing to make environmental caring a lifelong interest and commitment. A few examples include Topic. Clean air Singapore constantly monitors and review its air quality standard by setting new air quality aims and targets. Singapore uses telemetric air quality monitoring and management system comprising 17 remote air monitoring stations linked electronically to a central control system. 14 of the stations monitor ambient air quality while 3 measure the quality of roadside air. These stations periodically measure the concentrations of main pollutants such as sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, carbon monoxide, ozone and respirable suspended particles. Topic prevention and monitoring Malaysia referred to the National Environment Agency NEA for evaluation at the planning stage to ensure that sufficient pollution control measures are in place before implementation. Besides monitoring individual polluters, NEA also checks the ambient air quality for signs of pollution so actions may be taken to prevent any problem from worsening. Inspections on industrial and trade premises are also conducted on a regular basis to ensure that environmental regulations, such as the Environmental Protection and Management Act air impurities, are complied with. Um, 
Topic: Education. Greater environmental awareness through education has been strongly championed by Singapore's ministries, especially haze management measures. A sense of ownership by the public will lead to less pollution and reduce the need for enforcement. Strategies taken up in ensuring clean air. Stringent emission standards for the registration of new vehicles. Stringent standards on fuel used, such as diesel with low sulfur content of 0.005% or less by weight, commonly known as ultra-low sulfur diesel ULSD. Requirement for all in-use vehicles to undergo mandatory periodic inspection and pass the smoke emission test. Enforcement against smoky vehicles on the roads. Educate vehicle owners on proper vehicle maintenance to prevent smoke emission. Topic. Energy Topic. Energy efficiency Household appliances are labeled according to their energy efficiency levels, encouraging customers to buy energy efficient appliances and to reduce utility cost. These energy labels are part of the green label scheme. To reduce fuel consumption, members of the public are encouraged to take Singapore's well-connected public transport instead of private vehicles. Energy efficiency benchmarks and incentives are gradually introduced for offices, hotels, encouraging the private sector to be more energy efficient. Topic. Pursuing clean energy and reusing energy Singapore set its target to increase import of natural gases from Malaysia by another 10 million cubic metres per day by 2009, with the target of 60% of Singapore's electricity to be met by natural gas by 2012. Singapore focuses on increasing percentage of natural gas usage as it is a cleaner energy source, producing up to 65% fewer emissions than coal per kilowatt hour and 25% fewer emissions than oil. The first compressed natural gas CNG refueling station in Singapore opened on the 22nd of April 2002 and by the end of 2002 SBS Transit operates 12 CNG buses serving Jurong East and Jurong Island since the 1st of December 2005 it is compulsory for all diesel driven vehicle in Singapore to use only ultra low sulfur diesel ULSD the sulfur content in diesel has been reduced from 0.05 mg, litre to 0.005 mg, litre. Singapore also embarked on a project aiming to recover waste heat from the petrochemical plants on Jurong Island to power a centralised cooling system for the Jurong Industrial Estate, in which high-grade heat is used to generate electricity and lower-grade heat is channeled to be used for other process needs. Topic. Water Topic. Water supplies Two measures that Singapore Green Plan 2012 focus on are to increase Singapore's water catchment area and to diversify Singapore's source of water supply. Singapore plans to increase the land surface for water catchment from half to two-thirds and link up reservoirs in Singapore to maximize the yield of the various catchment areas. To ensure sustainability, Singapore is moving increasingly towards non-conventional sources of water. These include desalination and water reclamation aim to meet at least 25% of Singapore's water needs by 2012. 
The Public Utilities Board plan to secure 136,000 cubic meters of desalinated water per day by the year 2005 to produce no water. By 2010, the supply of no water to the industrial and commercial sectors is expected to exceed 250,000 cubic meters a day, or more than 15% of Singapore's total water need. Topic. Consumption The 2006 revised Green Plan targets to reduce per capita domestic water consumption to 155 litres per day by 2012 and to work with the three P sectors to increase awareness of the importance to conserve, value and enjoy water, developing a sense of shared ownership of the country's water resources. Topic. Waste management Singapore Green Plan 2012 set a goal of having zero landfill, which aims to minimize waste generation and increasing recycling as much as possible. Topic. Recycling In 2001, Singapore's recycling rates were at about 44% of its total waste. SGP 2012 targets to increase the country's overall recycling to 60% by 2012. To meet this target, the National Recycling Program was launched in April 2001 to collect recyclable materials like paper, plastics, and cans directly from households every fortnightly. Recycling bins for plastics, glass and cans are also placed at public places. A $20 million Innovation for Sustainability Fund IES fund was set up in 2001 to encourage and fund companies to help grow the recycling industry and develop projects and technologies that help achieve the goal of environment sustainability. Topic. Incineration and landfill With the increase in recycling, SGP 2012 aims to reduce the need for additional incineration plants from one new plant every 5 to 7 years to one in every 10 to 15 years or longer. Any incinerable waste is sent for incineration to reduce the amount of waste sent to the landfill. Non-incinerable waste, together with incineration ash, are disposed of at Semakau landfill. Successes, between 2000 and 2005, Singapore's overall recycling rate rose from 40% to 49% with waste disposal levels falling from 7,600 tons to 7,000 tons a day. The projected lifespan for Semakau landfill increased from 25 to 30 years to 40 years and the need for additional incineration plants is reduced from one every 5 to 7 years to one every 7 to 10 years. Topic. Public health Topic. Food hygiene and control Food shop grading system Every food stall is graded based on criteria like housekeeping, cleanliness, pest infestation, food hygiene as well as the personal hygiene of the stall handlers. This grading system for eating establishments and food stalls System encourages stall owners to improve their stall hygiene standard to gain higher customer satisfaction. Environmental cleanliness NEA uses mechanical road and pavement sweeping machines to clean the streets and sidewalks. In order to educate the public, NEA launched the Singapore Litter Free campaign in 2002 to encourage event participants to keep the site litter free by disposing litter into bins. 
Large-scale public events with similar litter-free message include the National Day Parade, World of Music and Dance WOMAD, and Singapore River Regatta. Topic. Mosquito-borne disease Dengue fever is the main vector-borne disease that caused significant public health concern in Singapore. Aedes mosquito breeding to residents. In 2004, NEA launched a Mazi Attack program in April 2004 together with grassroots organizations and community development councils where volunteers organized exhibitions, door-to-door -door visits and talks to spread the message of preventing. In 2005, the government launched Campaign Against Dengue, to raise awareness and rally people behind the anti-dengue fight. Every household received the 10-minute Mozzie Wipeout pamphlet on basic measures to take against mosquito breeding. Volunteers were mobilized to search and get rid of Aedes mosquitoes breeding ground in over 10,000 HDB blocks and private estates. More than 1,000 mosquito breeding sites were eradicated and 8,500 potential breeding spots were identified. The number of dengue cases per week fell from a high of 713 in September 2005 to 62 in January 2006. Topic. Nature conservation Through the use of careful planning in the Concept Plan 2001, Singapore seeks to balance the nation's land use needs with environmental preservation to ensure sufficient green spaces for recreation purposes without compromising its urban development. In 2005, N Parks developed 17.5 hectares of new parks and 7.4 kilometers of park connectors, bringing the total area of parks and park connectors to 1,924 hectares and 70 kilometers respectively. Topic: Nature areas. With the promotion of Sungay Below Nature Park and Labrador Nature Park to nature reserves in 2001, Singapore then had four nature reserves under the legal protection of the National Parks Act. The other two nature reserves are Chek Jawa and Bukit Timah and Central Catchment Nature Reserves. Topic. Chek Jawa. In January 2002, the government announced that land reclamation would not be done on the island and will be deferred as long as the land is not needed for other development purposes. Sungay Below Wetland Reserve Sungay Below Wetland Reserve was announced to be one of the two parks gazetted as nature reserves on 10 November 2001. As of 2006, reforestation efforts led by N Parks starting in 2001 have reforested 71.6 hectares of land in the Wetland Reserve, Pulau Ubin and the Central Nature Reserves. Topic. Bukit Timah and Central Catchment Nature Reserve Bukit Timah Nature Reserve and core areas in the Central Catchment Nature Reserve, are protected by strict conservation practices to sustainability and attract biodiversity research. Avenues such as new hiking trails and the HSBC treetop walk allows access to the forest canopy which was originally inaccessible by conventional means. Topic. Labrador Nature Reserve 
One of the few rocky shores left on mainland Singapore, the beach at Labrador Nature Reserve has a rich biodiversity of marine flora and fauna amidst the mixture of rocks, mud and patches of coral growth. Topic: Impact of development. Singapore enforces strict pollution control measures on local companies and factories. They are required to comply with regulations pertaining to air pollutants, effluent discharge and noise pollution. Quantitative risk assessment studies and extensive plans relating to management and disposal must also be done on hazardous and toxic chemicals. Topic. International cooperation Topic. ASEAN cooperation Singapore played a key role during planning and implementation of the Strategic Plan of Action on the Environment or SPAE 1999-2004, strategizing common plans and environmental programs aimed to realize the ASEAN Vision 2020. Over the years, Singapore has been actively supporting the ASEAN Vision 2020, covering concern issues such as forest fires, transboundary haze, coastal environment and biodiversity within the Asia-Pacific region. Topic. Collaboration with neighboring countries Singapore initiated many regional environmental programs, relating to water and wastewater engineering, environmental technology and urban transport planning and design, solid waste and wastewater management, pollution control, coastal and environmental management. A few examples include the Singapore Technical Assistance Program for Sustainable Development, launched in 1997 launch. The third country training program, signed collaboration with different countries over the years. The Small Island Developing States Technical Cooperation Program, launched in 1999. Topic. Collaboration with intergovernmental organizations United Nations Environment Programme Singapore has a long-standing relationship with both the United Nations Environment Programme and the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific ESCAP, participating actively in the East Asian Seas Regional Programme of the 1974 UNEP-initiated Regional Seas Programme. Global Ministerial Forums Singapore attends both the UNEP's Global Ministerial Environment Forum, which looks at current global issues like global environmental governance, and ESCAP's Ministerial Conferences on Environment and Development, which give environment ministers in the Asia-Pacific region a forum to share their perspectives on regional environmental concerns and priorities. Multilateral Treaties Singapore is involved in multilateral treaties including the Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer, and the Basel Convention on the Control of Transboundary Movements of Hazardous Wastes.